All right, Brad Gang, so I wanna to try to like kind of start a new video series. I'm gonna call it the Product Spotlight. <laughs> Um, over the last couple years, I've gotten to work with a lot of awesome brands, and I always do like install videos or share my opinions really quickly in videos on the products, but um, I kind of want to like give them their moment because these are companies that they take a chance on me and they allow me to try out their stuff and share that with you guys and hopefully um, bring some awesome stuff to your attention. So uh, today I kind of want to go over my gear that I'm going to be running this season. If you've been paying attention in my videos, you'll see like in my uh, end card, this year I'm gonna be running Climb Gear. So um, there were a few things that went wrong with my previous company that um, made me lose faith. So the first thing I ordered from, from Climb was this Climb backpack. And I just have to say like, based on what I've seen from it, you guys can kind of see it right here. It's just all black, you know, goes with everything. But it's got like this hard, you can hear it, goggle pouch and I keep my um, Insta360 camera in here actually. And then um, it's just overall, first of all, it's not as big, which is kind of good because you'd think you'd want to keep a lot of stuff in a backpack, but that actually beats them up more. Um, so this not being as big kind of restricts how much I can bring and ideally I won't have the issues I did with the last one. Um, it's got this little tool pouch so you can put in whatever you need, clutch tools, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and that just tucks right in. This section of the bag can unbuckle and then it's a kind of expandable, so that's always good. Um, then you have the inner pocket and these are the straps themselves. And then obviously there's a buckle on the front, kind of a different type of buckle. I've never seen one like this before until I got this bag. Um, and then again, you got some buckles over here. And uh, yeah, so this, I got it and was just super impressed with like the overall construction of it. All the different ways you can loosen it up and tighten it up and that sort of thing. So because of this bag, I was like, let me check out Climb and see if it's something I wanna run as gear. So a lot of guys I know run Climb and swear by it. Um, I thought it was about time for me to try something different. I've had success in the past, but like I said, um, as things kind of moved along with the last brand, I wasn't quite as pleased. So I figured today we'll go over what I ordered. Um, I'll show it to you guys what I'm impressed with, what I'm excited to try out, and uh, we'll go from there. So one of the first things I ordered is actually not um, kind of a piece of gear, but just something to keep my hands warm while I'm riding. That's always an issue for me. Um, and so back in the day, I had a set of muffs. They were Skidoo branded. So when I had a Skidoo, I would run them, but otherwise I pretty much never used them. Um, so I got a set of climb ones. They have this see-through section here. So you can actually like look through and see your handlebars, see what you're like operating. If you got to set your parking brake, that sort of thing. Um, and then on the gas side, you know, you can see your kill switch. Uh, they're adjustable with Velcro around the bars themselves to make them tight. They do unzip on the side so that if you need to open them up for some reason without taking them off you can do that and then they almost on the back have like a, a sweater type material um, to kind of like give you a, a little closer fit around your arm and obviously when I have snowmobile gear on it's gonna fill it out more um, to let less air in so yeah like I said overall I think these are gonna be awesome especially for me with my cold hands um, Excited to try them out and glad I have something that's kind of neutral now. It doesn't have to be one specific brand. I did have Articat ones too, but again, like I said, um, never had like a Polaris set. So this is going to be a big plus for me. So one thing I had noticed in the past with Climb Gear was it was always a little bit more of like a subtle color combo. A lot of blacks with like little hits of color. Uh, they definitely have moved forward from what I've seen with their color combos. There's a lot more going on. There's been some purple and greens. There's some reds. And then this year I wanted to pick something that while, spoiler alert, it won't match my sled, um, it'll stand out, it'll have a good look, and uh, something I haven't really seen before. First thing you're gonna see is this is a jacket, so no more mono suit. Um, I will say I'm happy I tried a mono suit, but for me, it just doesn't fit as well into the type of riding that I do. Uh, I think if you're up in the mountains, you put it on, you ride all day long, you can't go wrong with a mono suit, but when you're you know, trail riding and you're going into restaurants or a big thing I told a lot of buddies that ask about it, when you get to the end of your day, like let's say you're in town, you park the sled, you're gonna go to dinner. Do you have a jacket? Typically, us snowmobile guys will just throw our snowmobile jacket on, we'll go to dinner. I wear a light jacket up that I can get dirty in the trailer. You know, it'll keep me warm if it has to, but it's by no means something I wanna wear 
like out to dinner or that sort of thing. Um, with a mono suit, you either have to put the whole suit on or you don't have a jacket. So I either have to have like my jacket that I can get dirty in the trailer, plus a normal jacket, plus my mono suit, or I don't have anything. So um, because of that, I went back to a, a, a jacket and bibs combo. I just think it'll fit best for me. I really do think you could make either work, but just from like a making it livable standpoint, um, I think the, the jacket and bibs combo just works better for me now. So this is the Climb Powercross jacket. So technically it's not lined, but if you can see, it's actually relatively thick for not being lined and it's made of Gore-Tex. So it's gonna repel the water, it's gonna repel the wind. And when I put it on, like, I think it's gonna work really well because I wear a chest protector and I do typically wear base layers. The fit's really good, so I went with a large. I'm typically a large in all my jackets and uh, this one fits just like I would expect. This color combo is called petrol, um, petrol and gray. So that the petrol is like this bluish color. The gray is obviously the gray. Um, the fit's really good. I think it's gonna still fit my chest protector really well. And like I said, I typically do wear base layers, but my last non-line set of gear I had was literally like a windbreaker. Like you held it up to the light and you could kind of see through it. So um, this is in no way like that. Uh, maybe I can even show you guys. So yeah, like, you know, this is this is thick. Like this is gonna block the wind, this is gonna block the water. I can have a decent base layer on with my chest protector and then on warm days, like pretty easily change that up if I want to. Um, before I had to wear a full on liner underneath my last mono suit because it was just way too cold. Like if it wasn't 30 and above, maybe 25 and above, I had to have the liner and um, yeah, so happy to get back to something a little bit thicker, but that'll still give me some versatility for the warm days. Um, you know, and I, I, you never know. I, I will definitely let you guys know if I was wrong on the type of gear I wore, but I asked some guys that run climb and they recommended going with this. They're like, if you're gonna wear a base layer, it's gonna give you the most versatility um, and you're really not gonna miss the liner. So excited to try that out. I think it looks awesome. Um, should be some pretty solid gear, and I did get the bibs to match, so I will try those on right now. Little secret between uh, you guys and me, I opened everything else, but the bibs I have not opened yet, so. One thing I can tell is that the knees are thicker, which is awesome, that's always a big thing. Um, on my last gear, they were padded in the knees as well, and that, that definitely helped, because like I said, being a windbreaker type material, those uh, were pretty, pretty thin. Okay, so first things first, zipper up the full leg. You have no idea how much this means until you don't have it. Um, my last set of bibs didn't have this and it made it very tricky to put the pants on. Now, you might think this is a kind of a two-part thing. Number one, okay, you know, gotta take my boots off to do it. In a slushy parking lot, you probably wanna do that anyway, but even just having to take your boots off, if you can unzip the whole leg and just have to put your foot through the very top and not have to, um, you know, feed it all the way down. On my last set, they zip, unzipped up to like here. If you don't have to feed your leg all the way down, you can just get it in quick and you can get the boots on, you can get the pants on, you're good to go. Um, on the other side of that, when I had a mono suit that again, only I think it unzipped to about the same spot, because it's so long, when you're in a slushy parking lot and you're trying to feed your legs through it, the whole top, like if you're trying to hold it up while you feed your legs through, you're trying not to have anything hit the ground. So uh, definitely happy to see these have the full length zip on the side. Um, there's like the rubberized material to help stop the wind from coming through. Like I said, they're actually bibs, so they do, you know, hold up onto your shoulders. The cool thing about these is the top is removable. So you can see there's a zipper right here. So you could take this off and then on the front, there is this pin and you could take the pin off right there. And then you could just take this off and they could be like pants. So um, you'll have the Velcro on the side to tighten them up. Uh, if that's how you prefer to run them, obviously you can do that. Uh, probably wouldn't tighten quite as well as like something that might have like a conventional belt, kind of more like a snowboard pant. But if you really hate having um, the bib section of bibs, uh, it's an option to remove it, so. These are again the Power Cross pant in petrol with gray. So I went with a size large on these as well, and I have to say they fit really well. Um, still plenty of room on the leg. I don't know if you guys can see that, I'll have to do a little like a glamour shot afterwards. And then on the top, 
just tighten these up. Now there is a tether clip on the pants. I don't know if there is one on the jacket. Yeah, so there's a tether clip on the pants and the jacket. So if you have one but not the other, you can always uh, still have a clip. So that's always good. And then I'll tighten these up a little bit just because they're a little long. Perfect, yeah, these fit great. Um, Honestly, no complaints about them and pretty thick. Like I said, my last non-line set of gear was literally like a windbreaker. So these these still feel like a snow pant, like a, a, a set of snowmobile gear. Um, obviously not quite as thick as if there was a liner in it as well, but legs are never a problem for me. And that was like one drawback as well of the mono suit. You had to have a full length um, liner in it. And usually my legs were fine, but my upper body was because of that windbreaker material, a little bit more chilly. So. These should really, I mean, I really don't think I'm ever gonna have a problem as far as warmth goes with these. And even with the jacket, I'm, I don't really think I'm gonna, but it's always good in my opinion, you know, still be a little leery going into it, but I think I think both are gonna work really well. And no questions asked, I think these pants are gonna be great. Okay, now the helmet, the most expensive part of this whole thing. Um, I'm a firm believer in buying the most expensive helmet you can. Whatever brand you get, that's fine. Not so much just because of like, oh, the price, the warmth, this, that, but for this pur the purpose of safety, I mean, this thing is your last line of defense in an accident, you know? Something might happen to your body, hopefully you have a chest protector, all that, but your head, you gotta keep it safe, so I always try to get the best helmet I can, and again, I did that with this. It's ECE and DOT approved, so really like the best type of safety you can get from Climb. So it does have a helmet bag, really good quality helmet bag. Um, the cool thing is a lot of companies, if they have zippers, it's like two separate zippers and you have to do them one at a time. This one, they're connected by like a little handle. So that was impressive to me. I will be honest, I already opened this. I was super excited about it. So this has been opened before. Not every color that's on my sled isn't represented here, but the blue is not on my sled. So I can, I can give you that. So this is my helmet. If I'm being perfectly honest, I don't exactly know how to pronounce whatever this is, but it's an F5 Corrid helmet. Um, again, in the petrol gray, or the petrol with the gray, so you can see this is like a matte gray on the top, which I thought was super cool. I thought it'd be like a metallic. The matte's really awesome. It says climb across the top. So I did look it up. It's called Coroid, and it's this lime uh, green stuff on the inside of the helmet, as you can see here. One thing with the Snowcross style helmet is we can all break the visors. It came with an extra visor. I've never had that happen before. I've always seen that you can order them. Um, and on my last helmet, which was also a very expensive helmet for safety purposes, but I don't even know that I could have ordered a new visor. So um, really cool, this comes with a spare one. And uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that it's included, I think that's a really nice touch. It does have a breath box as well. So here's my climb breath box. I haven't put it in the helmet yet, but I will be doing that. And then the last thing is the uh, Rage goggles. So I got it in orange. Overall, like I've had a lot of trouble with goggles. So I'm definitely looking forward to see how this these work. Uh, I've never had climb goggles before. So I'm um, definitely excited to try them out. And and I just went with the orange because there's the orange tie into the helmet. And then kind of a small thing, but I thought it was pretty cool. So this is the box of them and it's got a magnetic opening lid, which I just thought was like very premium. Um, just something to point out, I thought. And then you have your goggle bag, it says Rage on them. So that's pretty cool as well. And now I will put the whole thing on so you guys can see kind of how it all goes together. Here's the full fit. I think it looks pretty awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm, I'm glad to have the little bit of orange touches up on the helmet. And then uh, I think it all ties together really nicely. And like I said, the thing I'm the most excited for is the two-piece suit. I'm glad to have that again. Um, I couldn't do another mono suit. So definitely a, a big uh, change for me that I'm happy to make. So yeah, like I said, I uh, just wanted to kind of do a little spotlight on some awesome products. Really excited to try these out this season and I'll of course be sharing my opinions with you guys. If you're at all thinking about getting some new gear, you're thinking about trying and climb out, every one of my videos will have an affiliate link in the uh, description. So feel free to click through that and uh, check out what they have. In the meantime, I do have a couple more product reviews that I'm gonna be bringing to you guys and then uh, those will be sled parts. So they'll have install videos and then again, actual like on-show reviews as well. Appreciate you guys getting through the off season with me. Hopefully a sled's coming soon and uh, that'll be a big part of the video. But until then, thanks for the support as always and we'll see you in the next one, Brad King.